Good morning, folks. We're going to begin down in Antarctica at the Pine Island Glacier and Pine Island Bay. Scientists expect this rift to fully cross the glacier this season, creating a new iceberg. There were no significant quakes again yesterday as we get ready to enter the next watch zone in a few days. Top quake wasn't even one of the five pointers in my opinion. Anything above four on the Northeast Caribbean plate could signal uptick to come. The South Indian Ocean is seeing development of a tropical system, slowly trekking west towards Africa, but expected to weaken significantly first. Here's expected Euro and UK precipitation. That same system is now starting to pull cold air in behind it. Again, you guys are set for a chill off. Here you see two high pressure blocks and a connection between tropical and Antarctic lows, pushing hot air down onto the Australian continent. The Antarctic low is shearing a bit onto New Zealand. They will stay slightly more comfortable and cooler than to the west. That low on the right is no longer extra cold. Most of the frozen effect is in Canada, but the wind is flying into that low from all directions and that's a lot of difference potential in moisture, charge, temperature, and pressure. The father of that previous low, patiently biding his time in the Northeast Pacific, again, it's not going to stop raining on Oregon, Washington, and to the east and north until that low is gone. Quickly switching to space weather, we had a gamma burst yesterday from right about the time the news was posted to YouTube. The main story overnight was the CME impact, first of a few already on their way here. When we check the solar wind, you can see the jump in density in the orange, below that in the yellow, the speed, even the temperature down in the green took a jump as our magnetic shield took a hard left to the jaw, stumbled back as resonance was induced, but never let a full magnetic storm occur and beat back the solar wind, keeping almost all of it out of the Earth's system. But as you know, that was just test number one. We have more impacts on the way as I reshow yesterday's Enlil spirals. Yesterday, I also said there was major instability on the southeastern limb. Well, it managed to hold on just long enough to face Earth and then release with a powerful solar tsunami, part of a triple eruption on the sun, filament being Earth directed. You see here on Soho, the lion's share goes to the left, but ejecta is in all directions. This is going to hit us as well. On stereo A, Earth is off to the left here, the second visible ejection headed our way. Oppositely, Stereo B has Earth off to the right. At sunset today, or just after it I should say, turn your eyes toward the eastern sky where Jupiter will be rising even brighter than this gives credit for. It dwarfs Capella and the Orion stars. It should not look that big. Get out there and see it. Now let's get through the night and bring the sun back around. Before she blocks our celestial observations, however, notice Saturn set to conjoin Venus in just two days. That was to be the start of the quake watch, but with all this solar activity, we may start a bit early. Flare watch remains low until the 28th. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.18 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.